Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the Introduction to Safety Procedures. Today we're going to be talking about some governmental regulations, then we'll move on to personal safety, and then we'll conclude with component safety. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. And we'll begin by talking about governmental regulations. First off, compliance with governmental regulations are not an option. It's mandatory. Not everyone is willing to do the right thing when it comes to safety, whether it is for their own safety or the safety of others or even the safety of the environment. Because of this, a lot of governments pass regulations and many of them have to do with the safety of workers and the environment. It is up to you to know and follow these regulations. Failure to comply can lead not only to your own injury or the injury of others, or it may involve fines. And in some cases, it could even result in prosecution. And nobody wants to go down that road. Now let's move on to personal safety. First up under personal safety, disconnect the power before repairing electronics. This reduces the risk of shock or electrocution. Remember that some devices contain capacitors that will retain an electrical charge even when disconnected from the power source. So know which components have capacitors. You should restrain or remove possible hazardous items. Jewelry should be removed before working on computers. Long hair should be restrained. Loose clothing should also be restrained. Remember to use proper lifting techniques. Bend at the knees, not the waist. Keep your head up. Avoid twisting when carrying items. If an item is heavy or awkward, request help in lifting it. And by the way, most companies establish weight limitations. That is how much they will allow you to lift on your own. Please abide by those limits. You need to keep the work area free of trip hazards. In particular, use good cable management techniques. If a cable must be run across a walkway, secure it so that it isn't a trip hazard. A good method is to cover it with tape across the exposed length that might be a trip hazard. Unless you've been properly trained, do not open or work on cathode ray tube monitors, CRT monitors, or power supplies. Both of these have capacitors that will retain extremely high amounts of voltages and can be dangerous. Also, CRT monitors are not environmentally friendly. Follow your local regulations on their proper disposal. In case of an electrical fire, unplug the power source or turn off the circuit breaker. Use a Class C or multi-class extinguisher and remember, never use water. If you use water, there is a risk that you will electrocute yourself. Now let's finish up with component safety. First up, protect components from electrostatic discharge, ESD. Now ESD is caused when two electrically charged objects that have different amount of electrical charges come into contact or close proximity, creating a sudden flow of energy between the two objects as they normalize their electrical charges. ESD can damage sensitive components, particularly the CPU and or random access memory. Using a specially designed ESD mat will help to reduce the chances of ESD. Better yet, using an ESD strap will also reduce the chances for ESD. The strap goes around the wrist and then is clipped to a ground source, usually an exposed metal surface inside of the case of the piece of electronic that you're working on. This will help to reduce the chances of a spark when working on equipment. You can also practice self-grounding. This is a normalization technique that's used to equalize the amount of electrical charge between the worker and the equipment being worked on. After the case has been opened and the ESD strap is attached to a ground source, touch an exposed metal surface inside of the case before actually touching any of the components. This will normalize the electrical charge between you and the equipment that you're working on. In some cases, actually attaching a ground strap from the piece of equipment to a ground source is advised. 
one way of helping to control the risk of ESD is to control humidity levels whenever possible. The possibility of ESD increases as humidity decreases. Humidity levels below 60% are when the danger becomes more prevalent. Now that concludes this session on the introduction of safety procedures. We talked about governmental regulations, then we talked about personal safety, and then we finished with component safety. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.